All right, so locations in QuickBooks Online. Before we dive in a little bit here, I wanna talk about who should be using locations in QuickBooks Online, as well as some general differences between that and classes in QuickBooks, as well as tags. So for if you're asking if you should be using locations in QuickBooks Online, one of the main things I think you should be looking for or thinking about is how you're, you're taxed, basically. So if, you're, if, you're, if, if you have multiple locations, but it's all being taxed under one LLC, that would be a good time to use location in QuickBooks Online. If you have multiple locations and they're all being taxed separately, then I would not recommend using locations in QuickBooks Online. You should have different bookkeeping accounts set up for each one. Talk to your tax person on the actual tax itself of whether you should be one LLC with multiple DBAs or one corporation with multiple DBAs, or if you should set up separate LLCs, that's a discussion with them. Having said that, some differences between that and classes and tags and QuickBooks. Locations for just that, if you have one LLC or corporation and you're running different, um, I say locations, it could be different stores, you know, it could be anything where you're running different sort of entities. Even if you're running two different businesses being taxed under the same LLC, you can use locations to track the whole different businesses. Classes are more of a subdivision of that. So let's say you have one LLC that's got two retail stores and then you sell different products in those retail stores. The LLC will say the same. You'll run lo different locations in QuickBooks. So those would be the two different retail stores. And then you can run classes to say, let's say you want to track t-shirt sales, jean sales, sock sales, anything, any department like that, that's when you can bring classes and you can use classes and locations both in QuickBooks if you want. Tags is a whole other video and topic, but it's a little bit more, um, you can break it down as much as you want and you can get really specific and break these down, but they're not as intuitive in terms of like reporting and separating things out. So that's who would use locations first of all in QuickBooks. So if you determine that you are somebody who would benefit from using locate or using locations, I mean, in QuickBooks. So the first step would be turning it on the setting if you haven't. So in order to do that, you would hit the gear setting icon here in the top right and then company settings here. And then you can scroll down under company and you'll see here categories and then you'll see the classes and locations. So this would be defaulted off, but you can turn it on here by hitting the checkbox here. And then you can do the uh, location label here. So again, like I said before, you can run multiple businesses actually this way under the same QuickBooks Online account this way. So you can do multiple businesses, stores, properties, locations, um, whatever makes sense for you. For here, let's say it's a store. We're gonna say we're a you know, retail store. So one LLC, multiple retail stores. We're gonna track the different stores using the same QuickBooks Online account with locations. Brings up a good point too. QuickBooks Online Plus or Advanced, you have this option. For Essentials, you don't have this option to turn on locations. So if you do want to run multiple businesses, stores, locations on the same QuickBooks account, you would have to upgrade to Plus or Advanced. So you can hit Done here, and that essentially turns on the option to track locations. So what this looks like, first we'll go through what this looks like if you're doing transactions in QuickBooks, and then we'll briefly talk about if you're integrating different stuff to bring in transactions to QuickBooks, what that looks like with different locations. So all the sales and everything looks the same with the uh, invoices or sales receipts. So if you hit a new invoice or sales receipt, you'll see the option right here. This is where you can choose from the different stores. And you can add the stores here as well, or locations, I'd say stores here. This is all interchangeable, locations, businesses, whatever you labeled it as, this is what will show up right here. So you can hit add new here and add the new locations, businesses, stores. Or if you go under lists, you can hit the gear icon again in the top right and go under all lists then you'll see the stores, businesses, locations, whatever icon here. And here you can add them and activate them, make new ones. This is where you can find that. But let's go back to the invoice. So this is where you would change it here and run you know, multiple sales off of this. Same with the sales receipts and same with the expense side. Add a new expense, new check, new bill. You'll see this option right here for store, business, location, whatever it is, you can choose it here. One thing to note, and we'll talk about more of this with integrations and journal entries, you can only choose for a QuickBooks Online expense or sale, you can only choose one location per transaction. So if you have an expense, and let's say you have multiple expenses under the same expense, so multiple categories in the same expense, you cannot break these down under different stores. These are all going to be under the same store. So that is a um, downside to using locations if you have 
one expense from your bank account that has multiple categories that may be for different businesses or stores. Same with the sales. If you had a sales receipt or an invoice, all the same thing in regards to this. If you have multiple services and products and stuff that you sold, you can't split those up into different locations. You can only choose one location with this workflow. I can show you some workarounds next. And this also comes back to the um, integrations. Bringing in different integrations into QuickBooks Online, whether you're using them for sales or expenses or bills or for both, some allow some bring in locations, some don't. So, some have the capability of syncing information from multiple businesses or locations into QuickBooks while choosing the correct store or location here. Some don't have that option, but you can still track locations in QuickBooks Online using a little bit of a workaround, and I can show you that next. The same applies to going back to the expense thing, and that's by using journal entries. So let's say, for example, in that previous example, how you have one expense with multiple categories and locations. So a workaround is you can add a journal entry for that with the different expenses, whatever they may be. You can add the debits in there, your bank account, credit it, wherever you paid for it. Now here in the journal entry, you do have the option to split this up into multiple locations. So you can choose multiple locations here, split up the different expenses for that one actual expense that went through, save it, match it in your bank feed. And also speaking of the bank feed, this is, you will find that option now whenever you're going through the bank feed. If you're actually categorizing stuff through the bank feed, when you click on it, you'll see this option now here for location. So this is where you would do that. This is the same for sales and expenses. So same as I showed you before with the invoices and everything, it's just here now in the bank feed. So now another possible thing that can happen with the, again, with the integrations, as I say, you have a POS system that brings over sales or expenses or both, but they don't have the option in order to include different locations. You can still use that POS system and still track locations in QuickBooks. You just have to do a little bit of a workaround that I found out. Um, it's not too difficult once you set up everything. So I will quickly go through that now. So you can open up some tabs here and you can run a PL by location report. So you can search it. So here it would be by store because we chose store, but this could be by business, whatever it is, whatever, again, you choose in the original settings, but so profit and loss by store, location, whatever it is. So now let's say, so you have the two stores here and the not specified is basically sales that came in that weren't categorized by other store. So this could be a common thing if you have, again, a POS system that's bringing in sales, but it's not bringing in the location information. So let's say you want to split it up by store. So at the end of the month, you have this information here. You have the sales put in from the POS system, but you don't have it separated by store and you would like to do that. But you don't want to manually enter all your sales. You still want to use PS POS integration. The way you can do that is you can set up a recurring journal entry. And the reason to make it recurring is so that you can always have this template basically to use um, to reference at any point. So you'd have a new journal entry just to set it up. But once it's set up, you would just hit use here when it's listed here and make it unscheduled. So what, you would essentially, so what you're doing when you do this is you can create whatever accounts they are. You can put sales and sales. So let's say you have two income accounts, right? You can have multiple. This will work for all of them. What you essentially want to do is debit one, credit the other, and credit to the actual store. I should say the actual stores, the actual, actual locations. So this might be confusing, but what is this doing? What this is essentially doing is it's taking away all the sales in the journal entry and then adding them back in spread out to the multiple locations. So this is kind of a workaround. You can do this monthly to um, separate your books with the POS system. And you can do the same thing with expenses. So this is how it would look for sales. So let's say for example, for the month, the POS system brought in that amount of sales and it's in the not specified list. So what we can do, and you'll see it in real time, jump back over into each store. So we would debit that full sale amount. And then let's say a thousand dollars of that was the North store and 1700 of it was the South store. 
right? So now you will see that it just shot all those over. So the sales went from not specified to $1,000 sales in the North store, 1,700 in the South store. <laughs> Same thing with the expenses. You would just do the opposite in terms of credits and debits. So you can set up multiple recurring journal entries or do it all in one journal entry, whatever works best for you. So let's look at the expenses here. Say electric. Say this electric bill was actually $100 for each location, not $200. But let's say you're using build.com or something and it brought the expenses over automatically. However, it wasn't able to split up by locations. So what you can do in this journal entry, again, do rent and lease rent and lease. So you want one to take it all away and then the other ones to separate them out. So in this case, we're going to have three. So we're first going to credit the total amount because crediting an expense is lowering it back down to zero. And then we're going to debit the other amounts, which is going to bring them back up and split them out by location. So hundred dollars each store. Again, we can choose the different stores here or locations, north and south, save and close. Watch what it does here with the rent. Sorry, I said electric before, let's say rent. Let's change that to electric. Sorry, let's change that to electric. There we go. Now we save and close it. And you'll see that it brought that $200 that was non-specified and split it up between $100 for each location. <laughs> So that's kind of a workaround you can use anywhere in this process. If you forget to add a store, if you can only add one location but in one transaction, but really it was multiple, or if you're using a POS integration, anytime you need to kind of like throw these numbers around a little bit and change them in order to split it up by location, you can do this annually, monthly, weekly, whatever you want daily. Um, just know you do have that option with, the, uh, with this trick here with the journal entries.